be building fractionation infrastructure in the Northeast for a while to come if nothing else happens. Now, all of that is committed to our plants, our processing plants, and of course, all the liquids from those plants are committed to Mark West uh, for fractionation. There's been a huge amount of discussion uh, about bluegrass or one of the other pipelines of the Gulf Coast, will ATEX start uh, taking propane? Will it turn to Y grade? Will there be another pipeline built? Um, and it's a, it's a big deal for everybody, um, but everyone sort of assumed, well, aren't you guys against that? Right? I mean, you're the, you're the basin fractionation guys, right? So the last thing you want is a new pipeline to the Gulf Coast. Uh, and what we'll work through here is actually the single biggest beneficiary to a new pipeline to the Gulf Coast would be us in our producers. That's the key for us, is whether you believe in the pipeline, most of us do, or whether you don't, a few of you still out there, will be the ones who will benefit from that. Let's talk about why that is. Every time or any time that the basin is short, and so if we can keep a lot of those NGLs that are produced, particularly by producer customers who aren't committed to us, if those are committed to going down to the Gulf Coast, Every day that the Northeast is short, and we're still importing today in the summer, we won't be for long, in the wintertime, excuse me, we won't be for long, but we are today, our producers are going to make 10 to 20 cents in MCF. Because if it's all going down to the Gulf Coast and we have to import back into the wintertime, it costs folks, what, 20, 25 cents a gallon to get propane into the Northeast. That means we're selling it at 20 to, you know, I won't say 20 to 25 cents, but we're on average easy selling it north of Bellevue. It's a positive margin. That means our producer customers are going to make 10 to 20 cents, maybe more, an MCF at the wellhead over their, over their competitors. That's a big deal. If our producers are, are competing for acreage with another producer and they feel like they can get 20 cents an MCF wellhead, uh, over over the customer, that's a really, really big deal for them. That's a, that's a, a big goal of ours. That help explain, helps to explain why we're probably more excited than anybody about a pipeline uh, down to the Gulf Coast. Um, second one is sort of similar, third bullet point. So if you're, a, if you're a propane gallon up in the Northeast and you really want to uh, get to this, you know, this exciting new export market everyone seems to talk about, um, what do you have to do? You probably have to pay 15 cents, we'll call it, a gallon to get from the northeast down to the Gulf Coast. You probably got to pay Enterprise uh, 15 cents to get on a ship, and you probably got to pay another 15 cents to ship to get to those, those international markets. Of course, all those change. But round numbers, 15 plus 15 plus 15. From the tailgate of our fractionation facility, we can be on the water in the Northeast for about that same 15 cents. And we can get to those international markets for about that same 15 cents, plus or minus a penny or two either way. What that means for us is that our producers structurally can have 15 cents a gallon, is it 20, 25 cents an MCF advantage uh, over folks who have to take that same molecule all the way down to the Gulf Coast and the international market. That's why for almost a year we've been exporting out of the Northeast. Prices are high right now. We're not getting it over there for 15 cents, I promise you. Uh, um, and it's costing us more than 15 cents to get to those markets today, but it changes the basin. It keeps the basin in supply and demand, uh, and it sets up where we'll be a year from now when we can finally load DLGCs, hit those markets. That's the big structural advantage for us. So that's why at the bottom yeah, it, it's been our belief, but we were delighted when a couple of months ago a new research report came out. I wasn't familiar with these folks, but I agreed with their conclusion. Their conclusion was that if bluegrass gets built, we'll end up, well, I, poor choice of words on their part, we'll end up in a monopolistic position. We won't end up in a monopolistic position. No. Uh, but we may end up in a franchise position. The bottom line is I think it, it feels pretty good for us. We have enough barrels. We can make just about any of those projects work. Um, 
and no one benefits more uh, than us for those projects uh, to work. So we're a big fan of export. Uh, we're a bigger fan of bluegrass. Yesterday, we also announced a letter of intent with Kinder Morgan, which would expand our gathering and processing presence in the Utica Shale, and also expand our customers' natural gas liquids market options through a wide-grade pipeline to the Gulf Coast. The partnership with Kinder also contemplates fractionation capacity to be located in Louisiana or Texas to support our producer customers' rapidly expanding demand for fractionation services. We are committed to provide the fully integrated midstream system required to effectively develop two of our nation's most exciting shale plays. And our objective continues to be the creation of multiple market options to maximize the value of our producers' NGLs. In order to further that goal, yesterday, Mark West and EMG announced a letter of intent to form a joint venture with Kinder Morgan and pursue three new major projects. The first project would be the development of our third processing complex in the Utica, which would be located in Tuscarawas County, Ohio, on Kinder's Tennessee gas pipeline system. This JV processing complex would initially include a 200 million cubic feet per day plant with a second 200 million cubic feet per day plant, per day plant installed shortly thereafter that's subject to producer commitments. Kinder's 220-acre site could be ultimately expanded to accommodate a billion cubic feet per day of processing capacity. The JV processing complex would be connected to our Utica rich gas gathering system and provide flexibility for producers at our complexes. Residue gas from the new JV processing complex would be delivered to the TGP system, which would provide our producer customers with another critical residue gas option. Our producers' NGLs recovered at the new complex would be fractionated at our northeast facilities or transported via the Y-grade pipeline to our proposed JV fractionation facilities in the Gulf Coast. The JV facilities would also allow us to reach new customers in the rich gas area of the Utica in northern Ohio, including Carroll, Columbiana, Mahoning, and Trumbull counties. Kinder Morgan has already obtained regulatory approval to convert a portion of an existing TGP line into rich gas gathering service, which would be operational during the fourth quarter of 2014. The JV processing complex would provide Utica producers with very cost-effective rich gas gathering, significant processing capacity, access to Mark West's extensive Marcellus and Utica fractionation facilities, as well as critical residue takeaway options. The JV would bring together significant capabilities of both Mark West and Kinder Morgan, and we're extremely excited with the new opportunity to continue our Utica expansion. Now, the second and third projects of the joint venture with Kinder include the development of a new NGL pipeline to the Gulf Coast and associated fractionation facilities. The new joint venture Y-grade pipeline includes the conversion of approximately 900 miles of Kinder Morgan's 24-inch and 26-inch Tennessee gas pipeline currently in natural gas service from Tuscarawas County, Ohio to Natchitoches, Louisiana and the construction of approximately 200 miles of new NGL pipeline to Mount Bellevue, Texas, or potentially South Louisiana. The pipeline would have an initial capacity of 200,000 barrels per day and would be expandable to 400,000 barrels per day with additional pump stations. Subject to sufficient shipper commitments, permitting, and all regulatory approvals, the NGL pipeline would have a fourth quarter 2015 in-service date. The, the overall strategy was developed based on the full range of projects that we mentioned, um, the processing, JV, the Y-grade project, as well as the ability to expand our fractionation services into the Gulf Coast. That was the big picture. That was the vision. That was the overall goal. Uh, but clearly, um, each of those projects need to stand alone based on uh, producer's interest, uh, producer and shipper commitments uh, that will occur um, over the next uh, you know, six to 12 months as we continue to market uh, these projects. And uh, we feel that while they're all very connected, uh, they could each uh, theoretically stand alone. Or is this being viewed more as a, a project that competes, say, with, with bluegrass? It absolutely competes with uh, bluegrass. Um, 
if you look at the volume projections um, out of the Utica and the Marcellus, and clearly there's a lot of variability in those in those forecasts, but over the, the course of the next uh, five years, uh, you would expect that if there is a need for transporting uh, a, the C2 plus wide grade to the Gulf Coast, uh, there's probably only enough volume to support uh, one of those one of those two projects. 